Welcome to Television Sydney News. I'm Alex Pleffer. It's great to have you with us. In this bulletin, a crocodile and illegal drugs seized at London Dairy, Fairfield students write their own opera, and some colourful Blue Mountains pub patrons raise money for a good cause. But first, a baby crocodile, hundreds of pills and steroids have been seized during a series of raids in Sydney's west. Police say the 50 centimetre long crocodile was being illegally kept in a glass fish tank with two turtles and a carpet python before being found during a raid on a London dairy home on Tuesday. 200 ecstasy pills and 300 grams of the drug ice were also seized in the raid. A 21-year-old man has been charged with possessing illegal animals, but an arrest is yet to be made in relation to the drugs. Nearly 200 workers will keep their jobs despite a fire that destroyed a carpet tile manufacturing plant this week. All 180 employees at Interface Floor's Picton factory have been guaranteed a wage for the next year as the company rebuilds. Interface Asian Pacific Chief Executive Rob Coombs expects the rebuilt plan to be operational within 12 to 18 months. Engineering Administrator Cheryl Nardone says workers are relieved their jobs are safe. The cause of the fire is unknown and is still being investigated. Bushwalkers have taken mining company Illawarra Coal to the Land and Environment Court over toxic, toxic runoff they say has polluted the Georges River for the past decade. The MacArthur Bushwalking and Cycling Club filed a civil claim last week against the company which operates the Westcliff Colliery near Appen. Club President Ken Hall says tests revealed high levels of zinc, nickel, copper and arsenic had been released from the coal mine into the waterway. The group wants the company to admit that it polluted the water. Hillshire councillor Greg Burnett has stood down as mayor amid allegations he misappropriated $285,000 from his former employer. He will not contest the local government elections in September. Councillor Burnett has denied the allegations, saying he was a subject of an anonymous and malicious campaign. Police have confirmed they are in receipt of documents regarding the allegations. Parramatta's iconic Auto Alley is to be rezoned to allow mixed-use buildings of 10 storeys and one of 30 storeys. The plan allows for a 2B zoning, which has the potential to create around 10,000 jobs in the precinct. Councillor Tony Issa said he had been in, in discussions with a developer for the past two months, who had suggested the 2B option would attract investment. The largest recycling plant in the Southern Hemisphere has opened in Eastern Creek. The plant is designed to recycle 90% of mixed waste, including timber, polystyrene, bricks and green waste. Dialer Dump General Manager Ian Collier says he hopes the community will embrace the facility because it produces sustainable products. What can't be recycled, such as plastic, will be put in landfill on the site. A group of Fairfield High School students has gone from having no knowledge of opera to writing and staging a performance at the Seymour Centre. The students took part in a five-week Watt Opera program to learn about how opera is composed and written. 14-year-old Sarah Neva Larua, a Year 8 student, played the role of a gold-digging wife in the student's opera. She says Watt Opera was a fun experience which has helped her develop her performance skills. It's hard to explain what I got out of it because I got a lot and I gained my confidence and that my singing really improved and yeah, it was, I don't know, phenomenal. Fairfield High School teacher Cheryl Webber says the program took the students out of Fairfield and allowed them to interact with students from other areas. The students benefited in many ways from what opera. It gave them an experience that they've never been involved in before. It brought students with a music interest and a drama interest from years 8 to 12 together and they formed a strong cohesion of friendship. They got a lot of positive feedback. Their self-esteem went up incredibly. I hope that they're able to take that confidence and transpose that confidence into other areas, not just their school life, but into their personal lives as well. Fairfield High School principal Robert Mullas says students were able to see how much work goes into producing art and how important it is to work as part of a team. Our original discussions were that they didn't understand what opera was about. Um, they'd never experienced it. And in fact, the best comment was that really, I think opera's for old people. It's not really for people our age. And um, the experiences they've had as a result of that, because they had no previous experiences, they've actually seen a completely different side of it. And I think as some of the students have said, they see the behind the scenes, which has been absolutely brilliant for them to actually observe that. So it's not only the fact that they've never experienced it fully, except what they may have seen on television skits, but they've actually been immersed in it from behind the scenes. 
Funds have been found to keep Camden's Wildlife Hospital open. The Wildlife Health and Conservation Centre will continue operating after the University of Sydney found several funding options. Director David Fallon says the centre will keep seeking public donations to continue its work saving wildlife. Camden's fair Dinkum pet supplies owner Karen Berger also sold raffle tickets to help. Bindura Som Warrior will be among the star attractions of a cat show for long-haired breeds in Castle Hill this week. The eight-month-old Berman is also one of four cats entered by his owner Fiona Reffalo into the 35th annual Berman Cat Club of Australia show. Berman Cat Club of Australia is running their annual show on Sunday the 5th of August. Um, it commences at 9am, that's when the judges will start judging. It goes to about 3.30pm in the afternoon. Um, at the show we will have lots of different breeds of cats, Persians, exotics, Maine Coons, Norwegian forest cats, as well as our lovely Burmans. Also, all the other breeders are available afterwards to speak to the public in regards to their breed of cat if they're after a different breed of cat besides a Burman. Ms Raffalo says the placid nature of the Burman makes it ideal for commercials, but its cuteness will not win over the judges at the show. She will be judged on the day on her overall appearance, um, her colour point. Um, she's a blue point kitten so colour point comes into it. She will be judged on her um, her boning is, a, is something else the judges look for, a nice strong boning in the kitten. Um, her profile also for the Burmans. Um, eye shape and colour, they're looking for nice deep royal blue eyes. Um, a nice strong chin on the Burman also. Um, Berman's supposed to have a nice long body, a nice rectangle body. They're not short and cobby. Um, tail length and also our gloves and our gauntlets on the Bermans also. The judges are looking for that to be correct. Um, nice and even and um, all in place. The annual cat show brings together breeders and cat enthusiasts from across New South Wales and is open to the public. More than 380 people turned up to Castle Hill Library on Tuesday to hear best-selling author Jodie Pico speak about the book she co-wrote with her 16-year-old daughter, Samantha Van Leer. The young adult fairy tale, Between the Lines, was conceived by Samantha when she was just 13. The pair wrote the book together by speaking lines out loud. I um, conceived the idea of what it would be like for a prince in a fairy tale and what if doing that role over and over again every time someone reads a book, what if that was boring? Because I imagine it would be. And what if he wanted out? And what if there was a girl in the real world who used the same book as an escape from the real world? And um, what if they discovered each other? Each other and fell in love and that's really how Between the Lines started. And when she told me, I, um, I thought she was brilliant because who hasn't <laughs> had a literary crush in their lifetime? Um, whether you are still waiting for Mr. Darcy like I am or you know if you've been a member of Team Jacob or Team Edward for Twilight, you know what it feels like to, um, to want a character to come to life. Pico says she has been proud of her daughter during the four week book tour and Van Leer stressed the experience had been a fun one. I know that a lot of teenage daughters here, what, you spent that much time with your mother um, and kind of freak out but for me it, um, it wasn't terrible at all, it was actually really fun. We have always had the same sense of humour, so we can make each other laugh pretty hard. And Between the Lines is in stores now. And in sport, it was a night to remember for Western Sydney Wanderers FC and the perfect debut for the Hyundai A-League's newest club. A 5-0 victory over Nepean FC came in front of more than 3,500 supporters at Cook Park in St Mary's. But whether they'll be ready for the start of the A-League season in October is yet to be seen. To date, the club has signed nine foundation players and trialled half a dozen more. But with 14 spaces left on their 23-man roster, time is running out. Come October 5 or 6, whenever that first game is against Central Coast, we'll be ready and we'll be prepared. Slowly but surely, you know, it's, it's coming together and you know, we've got a great backroom staff here that are, are doing a great job and uh, they're trying to take a bit of pressure off me and, uh, and help me out wherever they can. But, you know, finding players is difficult, uh, finding the right player is even more difficult at the right price and a player that's available and that wants to come here. So it's not, it's not easy but um, there are choices and, and we'll, we will find the right players. Former Newcastle Jets and Western Sydney born and raised fullback Tarek Elrich is among the club's first three signings. Elrich, who grew up in Auburn and Marylands, jumped at the opportunity to return to Sydney and sign for the new club. It feels like I'm at home and uh, playing with my best mates and uh, obviously we've got some young kids coming through in Aaron Moy and Cabs, uh, you know, I've, I've only heard great things about him 
So it, it's, it's been, been good so far. Um, you now it's a bit of pressure on me uh, being Lebanese and coming from Western Sydney. Students from schools around the Blacktown area are being given a taste of the new 2020 cricketing phenomenon. Cold temperatures and the odd shower of rain didn't dampen the spirits of the children who attended a recent gala day. Greater Western Sydney's Cricket Development Officer Kane Radford hopes the event will attract some new players to the game. Today is the Blacktown Milo T20 Blast School Cup. It's the first one we've run for Term 3. Basically the kids are playing Super 8's cricket and we've got uh, 860 different students here uh, participating in a fun and inclusive way for cricket. He says it's particularly important to introduce kids in Western Sydney to cricket. Uh, Western Sydney is an important area for us, especially in cricket. It's a big growth area. As you see, there's always a new school popping up every now and again each year and people are moving out towards Western Sydney because it's more affordable. So it's important for us to get into grassroots cricket here and build it up so when we keep bringing players through the cricket New South Wales system to our state team and our BBL teams. Quakers Hill Public School teacher Daniel McMahon says his school could be harbouring the next Ricky Ponting, Michael Clark or Elise Perry. Yeah, our boys are very good. They've won the senior cricket the last six years, so uh, I think we might have some boys coming through the ranks. Uh, with the girls, there's a couple there that sort of play softball and have a bit of good hand-eye coordination, so yeah, we'll hope to see. And finally, a colourful group of Blue Mountains pub patrons has raised tens of thousands of dollars for children's charities this year. Christina Pollard has the story. They might be a bunch of old bastards, but they have hearts of gold. The Australasian Order of Old Bastards in Springwood has been raising money for charity since 1977, and this year smashed its own fundraising record by thousands. At Branch 43 here at Springwood, uh, we've just had a record year of fundraising. We've managed to raise almost $30,000 this year, and over $20,000 of that went to the Westmead Children's Hospital, and we have also donated money to Angel Flight. Money is raised through weekly meat tray raffles and sausage sizzles at Springwood's Royal Hotel, which has constructed a special barbecue nook especially for the old bastards. Westmead Children's Hospital has performed 22 kidney transplants this year with the group's help, something members are very proud of. People sort of think of the name as, a, oh, it's just a bunch of rat bags, but... Well, we are a bunch of rat bags, but we do a good thing. So yeah, yeah. to actually break that record by such a huge amount was uh, a really, really good feeling. We've got an active group of uh, probably a dozen that actually do most of the fundraising, but everyone else is quite proud to be an old bastard. And even if you're a young old bastard, we have very young children, we have a lot of ladies, um, and we have a lot of old bastards. And while the bar has been set high in 2012, the bastards are confident they can do even better next year. I think it'll surpass it. I mean, it is pretty high, but you know, I mean, fingers that, crossed. Yeah, <laughs> but I mean, that just goes to show you know how much it means to all of us that being an old bastard. Yeah. You know, we just get in, we dig in, and we raise money. Proud to be good bastards. Yeah, <laughs> we are proud to be bastards. Yeah. That's all for now on Television Sydney News. For more information, pick up your local Fairfax newspaper. I'm Alex Pleffer. I'll see you next time.